Upon a lofty throne I saw a man seated, whom a host of angels adore, singing in unison, Behold him, the name of whose empire is eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we've finished uh, the season of Christmas, uh, we now begin our first week in ordinary time. And so this Mass is being offered uh, for the repose of the soul of Kevin McGurk. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray that we may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. At various times in the past, and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets, but in our own time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his Son, the Son that he has appointed to inherit everything, and through whom he made everything there is. He is the radiant light of God's glory, and the perfect copy of his nature, sustaining the universe by his powerful command. And now that he has destroyed the defilement of sin, he has gone to take his place in heaven at the right hand of divine majesty. So he is now as far above the angels as the title he has inherited is higher than their own name. God has never said to any angel, you are my son, today I have become your father, or I will be a father to him and he a son to me. Again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. All you angels worship the Lord. The Lord is King, let earth rejoice, the many coastlands be glad. Cloud and darkness are his raiment, his throne, justice and right. All you angels worship the Lord. The skies proclaim his justice, all peoples see his glory. All you spirits worship him, all you angels worship the Lord. For you indeed are the Lord, most high above all the earth, exalted far above all spirits. All you angels, worship the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus went into Galilee. There he proclaimed the good news from God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is close at hand. Repent and believe the good news. As he was walking along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net in the lake, 
for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you into fishers of men. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in their boat, mending their nets. He called them at once, at leaving and leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with them. With the man he employed, they went after him. The Gospel of the Lord. So in this uh, new uh, time of uh, uh, ordinary time, we... The church's year starts at Advent and then it goes through Christmas tide and now starts ordinary time. We start here pretty much at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. Mark, we think, possibly being the, the earliest Gospel uh, written. Um, its um, animal symbol is a lion. And so Mark's Gospel is quite short and, in fact, uh, the shortest of the Gospels, but also quite a lot of it is dedicated to the passion uh, and death and, uh, of, of Jesus Christ. But one of the things that will, and you can hear it in this gospel, a motif of Mark is how quickly it goes. Um, there's lots of uh, references to immediately and at once. So, Within the whole of the gospel, you'll hear this kind of zippy kind of uh, way of uh, that as soon as people hear Jesus, you will have some people will respond very quickly. And I suspect the, 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 the urgency in that gospel was because possibly um, the author believed that, um, that Jesus was going to come back very soon. And so it, there was that sense in which, you know, you must amend your life, repent, believe the good news now, because you don't know when Jesus is going to come back. Now, whilst we recognize, of course, that, of course, Jesus uh, uh, didn't come back as quickly as they thought, um, we know that, that our Lord could call us home at any time. And so, to some extent, the urgency of the gospel applies to each one of us, why would you delay uh, repenting and believing in the good news, especially when you know it's true? Now, when they, when they left everything and noticed that they leave their professions behind, it was quite a brave thing to do because, of course, they're leaving their livelihoods behind. But look what they gained. They gained being part of the apostles, those 12 that were closest to Jesus. They were the ones privileged, if you will, to see Jesus every day, almost all day. We also have that opportunity too. If we commit ourselves to him, he will be with us and we will witness extraordinary things. They were told that they would be fishers of men and we indeed can also be. I think at this time, as, uh, as people are, are drifting away from the church, and for reasons that we know, let's also try and be apostolic. Let's try and always remember that whatever we say and whatever we do may attract or distract people from Jesus Christ. And so let's hear the calling of these apostles. Let's hear that, that calling ourselves to be followers of Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Come, spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, O God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favour with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness and obtain what they devoutly ask, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and the of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the repose of his soul, and the God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God, I offer you the body, blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kevin, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. blood of Christ. With you, O Lord, is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light.
Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. So I'd ask you please to keep Pat Dixon's husband, Richard Dixon, in your prayers. Uh, yesterday uh, I gave him the, the last rites, anointed him and, and absolved him. And so please do keep him very much in your prayers. And of course Pat and their children, Matthew and Simon. The Lord be with you. May mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. And may the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.